Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm the founder of InspiredInsider.com where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today we have Darren Spindler. He's known as America's number one lead generation specialist for small businesses. Darren and his business partner, Andy O'Mara, generated over 9 million new customers for small business owners. Darren is the co-creator of Kids Bowl Free Summer Bowling Program that now has over 1,000 centers and get this, over 8.2 million children registered in just the first six years. Darren was the contributing author of No BS Strategies with Dan Kennedy and he's a speaker at GKIC's Super Conference. And for all you marketers out there, that is a very big deal. Darren, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks a lot, Jeremy, for having me. Uh, excited to be here this morning. And from cold Wisconsin. Yes, I am <laughs> up here freezing where we have had just about enough of winter. So, you know, we're going to talk about how you go from that idea to making that first sale and dollar and way beyond. Because we get a lot of comments from people, they have tons of ideas, they don't know where to start, or they have a current product or service, and they're not getting the traction they want. And you're the perfect person to talk about this. And I always like to include a fun fact. And fun fact about Darren is, he actually got his pilot's license because he got sick of the airlines. And he then took that on a seminar tour where he flew his own plane to, where were the places that you went to? Yeah, so um, I just got sick and tired, you know, of the airlines every Friday showing up late when I used to do more traveling. Now I've tried to rearrange my businesses so I don't have to do as much of that. But uh, yeah, we, we went out on a seminar tour and we went from Wisconsin, my home base, to uh, Minnesota. We flew back to another city in Wisconsin. Then we flew across uh, Lake Michigan over to uh, Lansing, Michigan, into uh, down to Illinois, just south of Chicago. Then we went to... Um, Columbus, Ohio, and we flew up to Syracuse, New York, wow. uh, down to Philadelphia, and we were actually going to fly from Philadelphia down to Orlando, but, um, you know, I have a small plane, it's a four-seater, and um, it was when one of the hurricanes was coming in, so we didn't want to get stranded down there, so I ended up, uh, we ended up flying commercial from Philly down to Orlando, and then uh, I caught a commercial flight back about a week later up to uh, Philly, picked my plane up, and then I flew it back to Green Bay, so... And we're going to get into some of the things that you were flying around and teaching these business owners. But so what was, what's been the scariest moment in the plane? In the plane? Yeah. Um, you know, I guess it'd probably be during some of my flight training when they do um, stall uh, practicing. So you're up in the airplane and uh, they make you stall the plane out and it actually loses its aerodynamic. You nose dive? Um, it doesn't nosedive, oh. but it drops, and you have to recover. And basically, they're yeah. teaching you how to recover if you would get yourself into a bad situation. Yeah. So, so does that help you in your entrepreneur uh, world? Um, you know, I think um, one of the big lessons that I took away from from my pilot training was the use of lists and checklists. In fact, this morning um, I wrote a newsletter for my uh, fitness business. I think we're going to talk about that in a little while, but. You know, one of the things that we've done is, is create a real list because we're looking to franchise or license that business. So we've been really compiling a bunch of lists. So right now when I need to write a newsletter, um, I think I've got 24 different things that we could include in our newsletter. So whether it's a success story of the week, um, a quick tip, a recipe, an inspirational quote, upcoming birthdays, member of the month, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're all there. So when I sat down this morning at uh, six thirty this morning to write that newsletter, it literally took me like twenty six minutes to write a quick newsletter. I sent it off to my um, my graphics people, and you know, typically most people struggle to get stuff out because they they don't have a list. And the thing with a checklist for the airplane is every single day you do it the exact same way because if you miss a step, literally you've got your life in your own hands mm -hmm. and. Um, when you're going out there, you want to make sure, I mean, literally, it's like doing your pre-flight checklist, making sure there's gas in the plane, even though you were there last time to put the fuel in, did somebody go in there overnight and steal fuel from you? It doesn't, you know, so you want to go check it visually to make sure. So you go through that whole checklist, and I think as entrepreneurs and business owners, I think we often, um, especially for us that are more entrepreneurial, I think we are more fly by the seat of our pants, and I think right. the more that we can put lists in place to help us have success, I think the better. Right, yeah, so you're thinking from the get-go, I have to have the system and systemize it so I can hand it off so anyone can do it. Yeah, and I wasn't always like that. Um, 
you know, and it's a non sexy stuff that works. Yeah, it sucks. But once it's in place, it, it's really helpful because just cutting down on times, you know, one of the other things that I've figured out is like, for instance, my my girlfriend is like my assistant. But even though we, you know, we're together a lot and I don't want to take care of a lot of those menial tasks, we've recorded those like with screen capture device. So now she's got her own kind of like training page. So every once a month, she goes there for like charging credit cards. She can now follow that system where I don't have to be there every day doing that for her. So Darren, how do you have the discipline to actually create the system? Because when we were emailing back and forth, you mentioned I am you know, entrepreneurial ADD. So how do you actually discipline yourself to do it? Fight it every day. <laughs> um, it's the truth. Um, you know, and, and I'm getting better at it, but you know, I've always, from a marketing perspective, always had pretty good like systems. So you know, when somebody comes into a funnel, what are the 13 things that happen after they're in there? So from that perspective, systems-wise, always been fairly smart and fairly good at it. Operations-wise, I really have to discipline myself to start documenting those things. And it's an everyday thing where, okay, how can we document this so that we can hand it off? And especially with the fitness business, as we're looking to, to license it and franchise it, it's even more and more important and I really have to every day, especially as an entrepreneur, fight that. And uh, I've also brought some people on my team now that, that are much better at that than me. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're in that kind of that process of, of having them help document it, which is, is much better that too. That makes a difference. Now, I always send a question ahead of time and ask people, what makes this a win for you? And most people say, I have a new book, I definitely want to talk about it, I have a new course, I want to talk about it. And what I think is telling about what you said, which I'm like, this guy is a rock star, superstar, and just a good guy. Because you said, the first thing you said was, I don't even know if you realize you did this. You said, I love to share. You said, I love to share with your audience some of the big lessons we've learned to build Kids Bowl free into a lead generation machine. And so usually that comes up in the, in the course of the interview. But I figure, let's just go right into it. Um, what are some of the big lessons you've learned to build, you know, to build Kids Bowl free into that lead generation machine? Well, you know, and, and I, thank you for being so giving and wanting to just to share. Yeah, well, I think you know the people that share, oftentimes it all comes back to you. I be, I'm a firm believer in that. Yes, I'm a I'm a capitalist and I'm an entrepreneur and I I enjoy that thing. But I believe that if you are out, let's just say at let's call it a networking event, right? And and your sole goal is to go there and collect as many business cards as possible. Well, that's not a good position to be in. In fact, um, yesterday, and we talked about this, I, I've started this new fitness business and I'm looking to sell a few corporate members. Well, three years ago, I connected a friend of mine who was working for this company to a bowling organization that had the ability to buy a bunch of ATM machines from him. Well, now he's got 200 employees. Now I can go back and say, hey, do you remember when I connected you to so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm in a position now that I can go ask him. If I wouldn't have laid that seed, you know, two or three or four years ago, now that conversation might be a little more awkward because it'd be like I'm going to him to get something. Well, I've already helped him out, so I figure mm-hmm. the more people you can help out kind of in advance, the better. So as far as big lessons with Kids Bowl Free, um, I think one of the main things is, you know, we're helping bowling center operators fill a time slot during the summer where they have a lot of empty lanes. So it doesn't matter what business it is, you need to have a hungry, starving crowd first before you can do anything else. So, um, in the bowling uh, market, you know, I've been in it my entire life. My parents built the bowling center in 1977, which wow. was before I was born. And um, for 50 years, bowling proprietors have had the same problem. They've got empty lanes during the summer and they've got huge expenses because they're very capital intensive. Um, property taxes are big, heating and air conditioning is big. Um, if you want to keep good employees, Payroll's expensive, so you've got to be able to fill those lanes. So that was one thing. So we helped them fill empty inventory, which solved the problem. Two, um, the numbers of kids participating in bowling has been on a steady decline since the, the early 80s. Really? So, yeah, Just because well, of video games or what? Well, I, th- I think there's a lot of things that play into it. Um, you know, a lot of folks, bowling leagues went for 30-plus weeks when soccer and everything else you can do in six- and eight-week segments. So... There are a lot of things that have contributed to it. There's not a sole factor. Um, 
But we've now introduced 8 million plus new kids and actually last year was the first year there was actually an uptick in youth bullying in America wow. again. So it's taken six years for that kind of to, to take that effect and now we're trying to help even more by developing products like short season programs that can come behind it because it's not enough just to generate leads. You've got to turn these folks into long term customers and develop them. Um, so it's not good enough just to get them to raise their hand and come for open bowling once or twice. We need to really turn them into lifelong customers, and that's our kind of our next steps here. Yeah, so for people out there, they should look at their slow times, really slow times, and see what they can do to actually generate you know, a business. And you know, for you, I was uh, tell people what Kids Bowl Free is, because I went on and I saw, oh, two free games. I'm like, oh, two free games of a lifetime, but, it, but it's actually per day. Yeah, so in the summer, um, basically we work with a lot of schools, churches, youth groups, YMCAs. Um, we work with a lot of mommy bloggers. And we promote, we give two free games away every single day all summer long. For so every summer, kid? Every kid that signs up gets two free games every day. Mom signs them up. And I say mom just because 85% of the people that create an account are, are female. Um, that's instructive to know as well. So if somebody didn't pay attention to that, know who your customer is because... 85% of our people are female um, that are opening the account. So that'll help us with our additional marketing, and we focus on that all the time. Um, that being said, they get two free games every day all summer. Mom registers the kids. After they are registered, we get their contact information. We get their birthday, so we can market birthday parties at the bowling center. It then says, hey, Mom, you can join in the fun for just X dollars. Um, you get two free games every day all summer long as well. Wow. Plus up to three adults in your family. So this could be kids like that are 15, 16, 17, or 18 who don't qualify for the kids part. Or it could be an adult babysitter that takes care of the kids. It could be a nanny. It could be a grandparent. And basically that revenue allows us to, do, to pay for all the marketing. It allows us to do all the customer support. We share half that revenue with the bowling centers. And um, it's allowed us to do a lot of great things for the centers. That's amazing. So what did your parents and grandparents do in the summer before this obviously existed because you weren't born yet? Um, so as far as what? Um, uh, filling the summer hours because it oh, probably has so, always been the issue. So a lot of them on some levels did give away a free game or two free games away, but they didn't do it online. They didn't do it obviously capturing data. And the data is really where all the gold is. And especially with today's marketing tools, we can send out birthday cards in the mail for the bowling centers automatically without them av actually having to see it. So we print them and we can send them out of a mail house. They never have to see it. So we, we can help them with that. We can automate emails for them. They never have to see it. Um, again, that's another big lesson. We do all of it for them because, quite honestly, they're good at operating their center, but they're horrible at marketing. And um, we, so we do all of that. And before, people would hand out like business card size things, cards at schools, try and get people to come in, but they would never get that data, so they could never follow up, and once right. the summer was over, and once Susie or Billy put their card into the washing machine, it was over, they were never reminded. With our system, we're able to remind them every week, in fact, yeah. we now remind them, we used to do it only on Sundays, we send them an email on Sunday, and then we send them one on Thursday to tell them to go bowling over the weekend. So we remind them twice a week to go bowling. Wow, that's amazing. And so I want to go back to when this all first started, when you were young. Tell me, what, where did you grow up, and what was childhood like? Obviously, you grew up around a bowling alley. Yeah, so my parents are divorced. Um, my dad owned a, you know, they got divorced when I was really young. So my dad kept the bowling alley, and um, I went back and forth between my mom's house and my dad's house. And, um, you know, I grew up basically picking up the parking lot, uh, the trash in the parking lot so I could bowl free games. That's at least the story my dad would, you know, you got to pick those up so you can go bowl. Um, you know, I stocked coolers and I cleaned toilets. And uh, when I grew up, then I was able to bartend and cook and do all that kind of stuff. But um, so I learned a lot of lessons then. But I, I also knew early on that I was more into the marketing side than I was, let's call it, the operation side of the business. Um, I remember when I was like 12 or 13 years old, I created a fundraiser for a family who had a son who had uh, leukemia. Oh, wow. And that was really my first foray into, let's call it, bowling marketing. Um, 
then my parents, like I said, were divorced, so I went back and forth, and my mom moved to Green Bay, Wisconsin, where I live now, and <clears throat> I would bowl at these two bowling centers in town. One had 60 lanes, and one had 36. So when I was like 20 years old, I decided that working for my dad isn't what I wanted to do the rest of my life for in this little small town. So I moved to Green Bay. I started working for the 60 Lane Center, and um, I helped them grow the business um, from no database to over 35,000 people on wow. our customer list. This was in the days when really we didn't have the ability to capture data online. This was all paper and pencil. Right. Yeah, so what did you do? So we captured, uh, you know, when people like league bowlers, we got their info. We captured data from like this, the college kids. So I went out to the colleges and I got them to come in on like Thursday nights. And when they came in, we'd capture their information. The next day, we'd send them a bounce back thing in the mail. And uh, I mean, it was pretty elementary, but it worked. And the stuff when you look back on it was pretty crude, but it worked. And we went from having no people on Thursday nights after 9 o'clock to waiting lists on Thursday nights after 9 o'clock. And then we did the same thing on Monday night. We filled Saturday nights up. And that business went from just over a million dollars in sales to over three million when I left about wow. seven years ago. So what made you even think of that? Because obviously the people there weren't collecting the data. How did you even come up with that? So one of my mentors um, is a guy named Bruce. He's actually my partner in Kids Bowl Free. He's been around bowling as well forever. Um, his family had a bowling center in Toledo, Ohio. And I'd go to his seminars and I kind of hmm. learned from him. And come to find out that he really learned from Dan Kennedy. And uh, that's where the kind of the Dan connection with me started. And um, just learning how important capturing that information was and then using the information to build your business. So even from a young age, you were reading and studying Dan Kennedy. Yeah, so I, I was like the world's worst student in school. Um, I, I was terrible. Um, I hated it. Um, I didn't enjoy it, except when it came to like business. Business is something I had a mobile DJ service when I was 15 years old. Um, and that's something that I've always enjoyed. And now you can probably see behind me my library, which um, I don't know how much I've got, got in that thing, but it's in the six figures for sure. Um, At one point, I'm going to ask you to pull something off, some of your favorites. But yes, oh, I, was, I was eyeing that yeah, behind I can, you. Uh, I can definitely do it. It's, uh, and I've got more downstairs. My, I drive my girlfriend nuts because like, I've got five books on my table next to the couch right now and it drives her bananas. What are you reading now? So I'm actually reading a, a book um, from Dave Ramsey His and I'm reading it uh, really to get inside the head of um, the customers at my gym so I'm trying to figure out some of the, the things there because we want to be much more than a gym and we want to be a community so one of the things because we're not a ten dollar gym um, I'm trying to help them create budgets and things like that because we are ninety seven to one hundred ninety seven dollars a month, so we're not the higher know, end. It's yeah. it's an investment, yeah. yeah. And I'm just trying to find a financial advisor or some information that could be beneficial to them. So I'm reading that. I also picked up his Entra Leadership book, um, and uh, then I got Randy Zuckerberg. I don't know if you know that name, but that's Mark Zuckerberg's um, mm -hmm. sister, and her book is all about getting away from the digital media. For at least a day a week, and to get our nose out of some of Facebook and all the things that we're on all the time, and reconnecting with real people. So it's it, it's an interesting perspective it's from, from somebody right. who built the tool, you know. Right. Um, so I've got that down there. Um, I also have I've got two or three other ones that were recommended. Um, I can't think of the names of those right off the top of my head because yeah. I've got a long list. Well, how do you kinda... pull some off the shelf of some of your favorites? Um, so tell me this, Darren. You know, you started at 15 with the mobile DJ service. What are some of the businesses along the way that led you to eventually having your own bowling alley? Yeah, so uh, I had my mobile DJ service when I was 15. Um, my dad had a pro shop inside his bowling alley that he basically let me run. So I ran that for a number of years. Then I moved to Green Bay and I actually became partners in the 60 lane bowling alley. Oh, so wow. after a couple of years, um, I became partners in that bowling center. And then seven years ago when I left, um, I took my money out of that. Um, I How, then started let, me, let me back up for a second with the partners because obviously you, you help them tremendously. How do you then go to them and say, I want to be a partner or did they come to you because yeah, they could just keep you on? 
Yeah, so they came to me, and, and I just got offered, you know, a piece of, of the pie, and um, that was fine, and it worked out, but uh, long story short is we, the main owner and I, essentially, I wanted to run it like Disneyland, because I'm a big believer in experiences and creating something that's more than just a bowling alley, and, you know, as an example, we took our birthday parties while I was there from $7 a kid to over $20 a kid, wow. and it was because we created these party heroes who were there and helped mom bring the gifts in, and um, we did balloon animals, and we just did, a, we brought cakes in from a grocery store, so mom never had to go out and do that, we had all the themes there, but she never had to go do it, we went on Friday, we'd pick up 30, 40, 50 cakes on some Fridays, Wow! and um, it was about creating a better experience. Well, he wanted to charge Walmart prices and, you know, he was wondering, you know, it, it just was not a good situation. So it got to the point where that place should have been doing four or five million dollars a year. And I was making nothing for working eight, 80 hours a week and I just grew tired of it and we had our disagreement. So I took my money and I started my consulting company where I would go out to other bowling centers and help them kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but I was on the road all the time and it was miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was making money doing it, but it was a horrible way to live. And at the time, my daughter was like two and a half years old. And, oh, yeah, that's uh, tough. Oh, it stunk. It was terrible. And, you know, you're, you're on the road for sometimes a month at a time, and it was not a fun situation. You now, get that call, Daddy, where are you? And that breaks your heart. Yeah, it stunk. So now I've been able to re- configure those businesses so I can help people from afar. I've got an automated marketing system where we do their website, we do automated follow-up for them, we can do automated direct mail for them. I can be very helpful to them, but I can do it without having to leave my house. Yeah. So then what was the next step after you're doing the consulting from, you know, you know, going to them and then from afar, what what was next? So, um what, what, what happened was we went to our national bowling show and um, there was a guy there by the name of Andy and he was selling a thing called bowlingcoupons.com and he was not in the bowling business at all. Um, he went there and he sold zero but one of our members and I say our because it was Bruce uh, who has a, an info like newsletter type thing for bowling centers. Um, one of his clients at the time and now one of my clients as well um, introduced us to Andy and he said you guys got to talk to him. Long story short, um, he had a domain called bowlingcoupons.com. We had the idea of the summer program. We hooked the two ideas together. We bought a domain called kidsbowlfree.com. We tested it the first year. We were going to do just 20 centers, and by word of mouth, it grew to 100. Wow. And um, then the next year, like 400. Then it went to like 700, and now we're at a lot, almost 1,100. So how do you manage all – I mean, because – if it grows that fast and you're sending out all the emails, all the, the postcards and everything, how do you manage that from the beginning? Um, so I can tell you from the beginning, I mean, we were out on the road doing seminars to get bowling centers into the program and we were managing all the marketing to get people to the seminar. Once they came in, we had to print cards and we had to coordinate that with a printer. And at the time, we, we didn't have really a lot of capital. So we were working... I mean, 6 a.m. till midnight, sometimes later. Uh, this printer we worked with does 24 hours a day printing. So there'd be times 2 o'clock in the morning we're shipping them wow. runs to print and making sure that FedEx labels are getting to them. And uh, now we've been able to find a printer that will, they coordinate all the, you know, we've got somebody who does all the cards. We do somebody that coordinates all the FedEx. Um, and, you know, it's grown. But at the beginning, um, literally it was, 6 a.m. to, you know, sometimes 2 in the morning. And wow. they were long days, but... Was it a tough sell for the bowling alley itself to come on board? Um, the first, you know, the early adopters, not so much, um, because they had the problem, and they could see the results that we were getting. So we, the first, you know, I mean, it was not simple, but it was not overly difficult. Um, it was a lot of work, because we had to go out and do seminars and, uh, all the marketing to get people to the seminar was probably more challenging than selling them the product. But yeah. if we could get 100 people in a room, uh, there were days that we'd sign up probably 70% of those folks for our yeah. program. Why would they not do it, though? Um, just some people's 
uh, business philosophy. Some people don't believe in the word free, even though they don't understand because they don't understand the back end um, processes to get people to that next step. That's yeah. one. Uh, some of them just don't do coupons. Period. Um, in fact, we just converted one of those guys this year. He owns 13 very nice centers um, in the south, um, and we're real excited because he's got great locations and he's going to do very very well with us. Um, but they just up until this year, he just didn't didn't do coupons, and that's that was his philosophy. But what got him over that? Yeah, well, um, basically, there's um, he went to a bunch of his let's call them colleagues who are other bowling center operators that own small chains, and they're all using us, and they're using our system, and they gave them their results, and now he's in. Yeah, it just sells itself. Now, from the beginning, obviously. It probably was a different backend system than it is now. Oh, how, it's, how does it different differ? Uh, yeah, it changes all the time. I mean, we're continually trying to make it better every single day. Um, as an example, Andy, my business partner, just be, built a piece of software which is very cool, um, which we're going to tie into Kids Bowl Free now. It's called Lead Responder. But basically, what happens is when they click on a link. It'll fill out a web form automatically with the data we've already created, so it's just doing a simple pass through. And then when they hit submit, previously that would go into the bowling center's email box as a lead, and then they'd have to pick the phone up and call. But unfortunately, most people, not just bowling owners, but most business owners are horrendous at follow up. So what we've done is this software actually will call you. So it'll call the bowling center, it'll say, hey, this is lead responder. Susie Q has a birthday party she's looking to book on X date. If you want to be connected with her right now, press 1. <laughs> and literally, you press 1, and within 30 seconds of the time her she submits that form, you're on the phone with that person. Wow. So we're in the process of testing that right now with a dentist. Um, we actually are testing it with um, a realtor. Um, we're working with it in our fitness business. Because when those things, when those people are looking, they're hot, right? Right. And they're ready to do it right now. Right now. And you don't want them Googling anybody else. And when they're online, one of the downfalls of online is the ability to click and call and instantly go away from your business and go to somebody else's. So with this tool, they can now be instantly connected. And uh, the person's like, holy smokes, look at their follow up. So, yeah, that's amazing. With. Now, with the bowling centers, is there a fee for them to join, or how does that work? Yeah, so they pay a fee. They get some uh, promotional materials for that, and then, um, you know, from there they distribute these four by six postcards. And uh, last year, I think we distributed like fourteen million of them. Wow! Holy cow! Yeah. So we printed and handled logistics for fourteen million four by six postcards. Yeah. So you've really just carved out a niche in every bowling alley would use you, your one of your services to uh, basically market. Yeah. So um, for the summer program, um, we're pretty well known. I mean, as far as in the industry, um, there's only one other program besides ours that use more bowling centers actually use, which is Pepsi Cola. So um, when you're second to Pepsi, as right. far as and they've got a big national program for Pepsi, so we currently we have activation in, in more centers than any, any other product in the industry, so except for Pepsi. So Darren, tell me what did you think what are some things that you thought would work uh, and it, it failed miserably? Um as far as kids bowl free or for, for others. If stuff? you're marketing to um, the bowling centers, because I mean that's Initially, I guess you have to get all the bowling centers on board, right, to expand the program. What do you think would work really well with the business owners that Well, that we didn't? used to have a program, a, a complete other program that was more of a league that we were trying to market nationally. But what happened is it required a lot of work on their part. And the big lesson was you have to do the majority of the work for the people. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that in today's society, um, the people who are the learners and doers are few and far between. And the people who just want the help for done for them, um, that's the majority. And really everything that I, I, I'm focusing my efforts as far as my marketing companies on is all done for you services. Um, not really coaching and teaching you how to market because 
there's plenty of people that'll do that, and unfortunately, the the market for that is shrinking fast, and the amount of free crap on the internet, as far as people teaching other people how to like allegedly learn how to market, right. um, and I say allegedly because a lot of the stuff you got to be very careful of because the free stuff there's a lot of bad information out there. But I think my biggest lesson is just figuring out how can you do the majority of the work for them and giving mm -hmm. them as least amount to do as possible and still make it a win for you and a win for them. Yeah, that's a great point because a lot of times we do see those will teach you, but if someone just did it, especially for a business owner, it's almost a no-brainer for them. Yeah, I mean, for instance, I've taken down my bowling marketing system like the website thing and we've um, I've partnered with a guy in the tanning industry, so now we've got a system in the tanning industry. Um, and you know, again, that's taken what I've already built, uh, converting just a little bit of it to work for tanning, and and now we're, we're going to be able to go scale it into the tanning industry as well. So, how do you decide what to go into? Because obviously, when you have these systems, you could pretty much go into any business and start to automate, you know, the back end. How do you decide to go in the tanning industry as opposed to, you know, golf courses or? <laughs> yeah. So the only reason I really decided to do this is because I've got a good partner. Um, He's already connected to all the people in tanning, so it's made it easy to open up doors um, because that is one of the, the harder things to do is if you're not in that specific niche, how do you crack through? So if you can do a joint venture with somebody where they've already got the contacts and you've got the system, it makes it much easier to, to get off the ground. I mean, if you're going to go into the golf industry it, and you're just saw another Joe off the street, how do you do it? I mean there's a thousand ways you could try and do it and, and you can do it but it's just faster and a lot less painful if you can find somebody who can help open up those doors for you. Yeah. So what's been the hardest part about running Kids Bowl Free? Um, I think it's just a matter of how can we continue to add value and make the program better for the proprietors and how can we take these people from free trial offers to long-term customer and do it with a way that you know because the, the one thing we always ask ourselves how does and we always ask ourselves this first how is this going to benefit the bowling center we always ask that before we build anything because if it doesn't benefit them first you know it's problematic for us long-term as a business solution I think a lot of people go into business and say how can I put money in my pocket today and they don't think about the other side of it like from their customers shoes and that's the first question we ask. Then we ask, you know, how does this benefit the consumer? And then how can we make money at it? And I think we look at it oftentimes in the reverse of what many people do. I think a lot of people say, how can I make $10,000 today instead of how can I help this guy make 50000 so I can get 10 of it? Mm -hmm. That goes into you when I asked you what, what makes it a win. And you said, I want to share. It goes yeah. back into that mindset. What um, what did you have to tweak to go into the tanning industry? Like, you know, someone may listen to this and, well, I have this industry, you know, that doesn't apply to me because I can't give people free bowling. But how did you, so, you know, people can understand what you did to get into the, the tanning industry? Yeah, so, um, you know, one of the things that I, I teach, and actually, Dan, you know, uh, Kennedy asked me to speak at the super conference, and I didn't even have a product. He just said, hey, can you come and share the story? And I think you should create a product because what you've been able to do is is awesome, and you should you should create something. So we've done that. And what I you know what I use typically is what I call the big relevant bribe. So how can you what what can you give people? And you know it used to be a free report, right? Well, the free report I think is pretty dated at this point. Um, are people having success with it? Yes, um, but I think if they got a little more creative, one of the things that we've been doing a lot of is small little books, you know, 24 to 48 pages, and then creating a DVD, which is essentially a PowerPoint presentation over the top of it. Now, that's not what we used in tanning, but for my fitness business, that is what we use. We actually have a DVD that we can mail out. Um, after they opt in, they can request that. We also get their mailing information. But for the tanning industry, what we've done is basically giving them I think it's $180 worth of coupons that we then deliver over like, I don't know, 12 weeks or 18 weeks. So it gives us a reason to email them every X number of days. And um, when they opt in, they get an instant 
offer, and then after they opt in, there are additional offers that follow on a timer. So what's on the DVD that you send out for your fitness? Um, basically, it's the three uh, essential elements to getting fit once and for all. Um, and basically, they're proper nutrition. So we teach them what to eat then and how to eat, how frequently to eat, what to quit eating. Uh, two, we teach them about the proper fitness or exercises because they don't need to run on a treadmill for an hour a day. In fact, for most people, it's the like opposite and the exact wrong thing to do. Um, and then we teach them about community. And uh, that's all three of those elements is what our business is about. Mm -hmm. um, so we just build that in there. And it's a sales pitch, essentially, but it's not, it doesn't come off that it's way. It's informational. They, yeah, they get information. So... And this kind of goes into what we were talking about where, you know, you said you offer something free or uh, amazing. And will you show people what you're creating for corporate uh, corporate accounts for the fitness? Yeah. So, you know, you and I were talking and this is kind of like overcoming a challenge. So um, our fitness business was a startup. And, and when I go to the banker and um, look at purchasing a bu building for six hundred thousand um, dollars, he doesn't necessarily look at your personal financial statement although he wants it he looks at what's the business done over the past nine months in the first four months were pretty brutal it sucked um, so they were you know not super interested so now I've kind of changed my pitch to I'm gonna buy this as a personal investment and I've got this tenant that's gonna go in there but uh, regardless of that I want to be able to get my new facility because it's gonna be three times bigger than what we have now I want to have some members in um, early prepaid. So in an effort to quickly try and get eight to ten corporate members at $9,600 each, um, I've created a piece of direct mail that um, is going to go out to key business leaders in town that have the ability to write a $10,000 check because they've got, and they don't have to go through like boards and all this other nonsense. Just like, hey, I care about my employees. I know if I get them fit, they're going to be more productive. And I can write a check for this. So And it gives all their employees a, a membership, essentially. Uh, yeah, we give them a membership. And in, in the letter, um, it tells them that we'll actually keep track of the attendance for them. Um, we're going to make sure we take measurements once a month. We're going to take other key factors once a month and send them re the results so that they know that their people are showing up. Because a lot of wellness programs will be like, oh, go, a good here's your card, go to Anytime Fitness or one of the drive through joints. And if you go there three days a week, all they know is that the person went in there and like scanned in. No, we're actually going to make sure that they get results because all of ours are small group classes. So what we That's did, really smart. Yeah. It's a positive feedback loop. They're actually using your services, which justifies their purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we wanted to show them. So I created this and it's going in a box and you can hear it. It kind of rattles. So... The letter, it's a six-page letter, and it basically just introduces them to us, and then it walks them through the offer. It's got testimonials from existing clients in it, talking about how awesome we are and how we're so much different, and then um, I've got my story in here about why I created this, and that's me last year crossing the finish line at the marathon, um, and I was telling you earlier, I cut 27 minutes off my time. Um, doing our program and only running one day a week. This is a story about a guy who lost 96 pounds with us. When he started, he was 440 pounds and he couldn't bend over to pick up a pencil. Wow. Um, this is a cell phone message from one of the ladies um, who basically just said her clothes are fitting better, she's eating better, she hasn't had soda in a couple of weeks, and she's in tune now with what she's actually eating. But basically, I tell my issue is my bankers aren't sleeping very well right now because I want to do this. And in order for them to sleep better, right. I'm looking to pre-sell a couple of memberships. And um, I put in here, successful people make decisions fast. So if it's for you, here's fast action bonus one, which is a round of golf at the private country club here in town. Um, we're members of it. I just built a house on the back uh, of the, on the course. So in the, in the box, I also have golf ball and tees. So it ties in with the letter. And this is going to go out. Yesterday I sent eight of them. And uh, there's about 50 of these that are going out. Wow. And then uh, down at the bottom I've got another testimonial. And this one's kind of cool because it, it, it gets to the point of this isn't just for young people. 
Um, I've been working out for the past 30 years, reading books and listening to my iPod. Now it's time to get results. Um, at the beginning, she said, I've been looking for something for two years. I had no idea it would look like Fitness Renegades, but I loved it. From the personal connection, the encouragement, accountability, fun and challenging and competitive workouts that are time friendly. Excellent. So wow. we'll see what happens. So I've mm. sent out eight of those. The goal is to get um, out of the 50 I send out, my goal is to get six to eight of these people that prepay for 10000 bucks. It gets me a quick 60 to 100 grand. And um, we'll see what happens. So what made you decide to start this fitness center? Because obviously, you know, doing the online is, there's not the same overhead. Now you have a huge overhead. What made you decide? Obviously, you had a lot of motivation to do this. Yeah, so, um, you know, Andy, my business partner, he lost 60 pounds doing what we're teaching people. Uh. Um, I was going, and he's kept it off for six years. Um, he's completely changed his life. Um, I was going to a trainer here in town getting results I could see it was working for other people but it was me and two other girls every morning and essentially it started as me saying hey let me help you out you need money because your place doesn't look good two you need um, more customers let us help you get the customers three you're gonna train and long story short I spent three hours with him he didn't want to do it so I you know Andy and I were on the phone I'm like why don't we just do this and we'll hire somebody so we bought equipment, we found a location and we hired a trainer and uh, that's how it started hmm. and uh, we have since also now created because we are online people we created a version called Rock Your Wedding Dress so it's a online version for brides to be that we launched about three four weeks ago and we're just kinda optimizing the funnel right now hmm. so we're driving traffic through Facebook and uh, only targeting brides at a certain age driving them to our site and they're buying our program to do at home online and they can do it on their iPad, their iPhone, they can, if they're techie we tell them they can put it up on their their big screen TV with an Apple TV or something like that mm -hmm. but we also now are in the process of having an upsell with a DVD version um, so that'll help us as far as getting a few more dollars out of every person that goes through too. That's great. You know, thanks for sharing that. That's a powerful, you know, just to see the layout of that and what yeah, you can do. Yeah, and you know, I, it, it, it's another lesson too for people who have a bricks and mortar business. You know, they always say, well, I can't get in the info business. Well, Andy and I knew before we started the bricks and mortar that at some point we, need, we were going to do info products. And we've got three or four more that we're confident that once we get this one off the ground, we'll build. But what can you do taking from your current assets, which is I got a trainer, we have a system that works, and we have people that like us, and we know how to generate leads. How can we now? turn that into additional money and that's what we're working on. Yeah. And that kind of goes into my next question, which is I know you've helped a lot of businesses and generate a lot of you know, leads for businesses. What are some examples of some hidden opportunities? Because you go in there, you find some hidden opportunities and new revenue streams that that you know they didn't know about. What what are some examples of those? Yeah, so often I mean most people, you know, I we're working with a a, a lady right now who has a subscription based menu planning service. And you can go on and essentially plan your, your schedule of meals for the week. She's got 52,000 people that had used her service. Wow. There's no communication going to those people at all. Nuts. So, you know, we'll go in there and we'll start doing some real marketing to those people, um, looking for other ways that we can reach them besides just email, because she only got email. If there's one thing that makes me like my skin crawl, it's just getting an email address. To me, just getting an email address is like, it's not even a lead. That's just like, I don't know what it is. It's somebody opted in, but it's really not a customer. So we're going to go back and try and get them to give us their mailing address so then we can come back and do more creative things. So that's one thing. Um, oftentimes people don't do extra things with their current customers or referrals. So like yesterday we started a, um, a referral push for this month because we're looking to get into this new location. So we gave everyone $20 bills. They look like a $20 bill. And it's a $20 coupon they can give their friends. If they refer three friends this month, they'll get a free two months, actually, at our facility. Wow. So we're giving both the new prospect a deal and we're giving our current customer a great reward. And um, so, yeah, so we'll go in and, you know, we practice everything we preach, unlike many, let's call them gurus, that 
often just teach and they run their little info business. Um, I'm a big believer in practicing what you preach and we're invested in probably six or seven different things right now that we're using our marketing skills to to really grow them. You know, and I think a lot of people have issues too um, just generating a new lead in, you know, in the first place. What are some things you find that work uh, in the fitness business? Um, so in the fitness business, you know, actually, and I, I was, um, I, I'm not the world's biggest believer in social media. Um, I think if you want to read a good I book, I saw about something. It, what you you posted something on your Twitter of the cover of a book? Yeah, social, so, social media is bullshit. Um, actually, I don't know if I can quickly locate. Was that. it good? It's a great book and it's a fast read. The guy's name is, I think, B.J. Mendelson. Um, I don't know if I was it. Uh, was it truly about how he disagrees with social media, or was oh, it just yeah, a, just it's, a certain? It's great, and he's got great examples in, in the book. I um, I'd encourage you to read it. But we've been able to, you know, with our fitness business, do a pretty good job through Facebook. In fact, yesterday we launched a new um, win six months at our thing. It's a photo contest where you tell us your story. But we're doing paid stuff on Facebook. Um, We've, I don't know how much we've invested so far, probably a couple thousand bucks um, in paid ads and um, we target specific people. Um, I'm not going to disclose those because it's kind of our part of our, our secret sauce for and, sure. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the secret. And I don't, I don't edit anything so I don't want you to mention it if you're going to, I don't want you coming back and saying, Jeremy, edit oh, that yeah, out. No, no, yeah. no, no. So, yeah. But there are... The beauty of Facebook now, and, and they're getting better at allowing you to target people. So if you're going after people who, like as an example in your case, you know, if you're looking for athletes who, you know, maybe ran a marathon or maybe they created, competed in an Ironman or maybe they're a CrossFitter or whatever, you know who your better customers are, right? right. Well, you can go out on Facebook now and target people by age, by gender, by likes, by number of miles from your business. One of the cool things that a lot of people don't know is because email open rates are plummeting, um, you can actually suck your email list out of your autoresponder you know, or your database. You can then upload those into Facebook, create a custom audience, and run at targeted ads at your existing customers. Hmm. Especially for people who have Gmail, um, you can suck out just your Gmail addresses, upload them into Facebook, and target them because if you're sending them from most email you know marketing tools they're all going into the promotions folder right and you're they're fighting. not seeing it yeah no they're not seeing it so now you can target those people on Facebook because they're on Facebook and you they don't know why they're getting the ad and um, it just gives you another way to to kind of re-engage right. them right and I know Darren over the years you've become an expert copywriter I want to hear some of your favorite headlines what's your method because you I mean obviously you created that beautiful six page you know that you're going to send to get this corporate account. What are some of your favorite headlines that you like, and um, what's your method for writing great copy? Um, so I read a lot. I don't know if I have a specific favorite headline. Um, what are you most are proud of that you've that created? That you can, you know, temp take. Uh, uh, you can take and kind of template. Um, I actually have like Yannick Silver's, you know, course on copywriting. So he's got. You know the top hundred headlines. You can kind of go in there and copy and paste. Um, you know I've used the, um, you know, the old piano one where they couldn't believe it until he sat down to play. I've reused that one a couple of times on like my bowling centers. Like, uh, you know, bowling centers wouldn't believe it that they could have waiting lists in the summer until we, blank 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 whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, Dan uh, is one of the people that I follow as far as is copywriting. I'm a member of his Look Over Your Shoulder, which is his high level um, course. For me personally, when I write copy, um, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll show you. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, in my office, um, on this board, you can see all the little index cards. Yeah. Um, those are emails that need to be written for a follow up sequence. Underneath it is basically bullet points of what needs to be written. When I when I write for let's say a sales letter, I basically do the same thing. I will write all the things that need to be in the sales letter, and then those will go on to typically like a board like that or one of those fold out boards where I can carry it with me. So if I want to go write somewhere else besides my office, 
they're on like this cardboard thing, yeah. and uh, I just fold it up and take it with me, and then I can write a paragraph or a like for example, if you need you want to include a testimonial, you'll have that as a bullet point. Something yeah, like so, that. Yeah, um, so here I'll grab this one. Uh, So this one, if she was going to be a testimonial, this one is called Email 7. This is Meet Jess. Jess is one of our members. And video of her on her jumps. So when Jess started with us, she was 351 pounds and could not pick herself up off the floor. Wow. So I want to write the story about that. Uh, I want to write how many pounds she's lost, how many inches she's lost. So XX is just, I got to go refer or say to my trainer, how many pounds and inches has she lost? Because I know her story. I just don't have the The, the specifics, yeah. Yeah, her new attitude about life, and then a picture of her doing 210 push-ups. What? So, Are you serious? Yeah, so we did a fundraiser for kids who don't have like money for back-to-school supplies. So for that business, we did what was called push-ups for pencils, and um, we did 20 minutes of push-ups, and she did 210 push-ups in what? 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. If you gave me a week, I don't know if I can do 210. <laughs> you got to become a renegade. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We'll drive up to Wisconsin, or you'll have one in Chicago. Um, we are looking for a spot, so all if right. You want the uh, location uh, in Chicago. I'll you know. I'll be on the lookout. Um, yeah. So, Darren, tell me, you know, obviously you get a lot done in a day. What are some of the the things you do that are important in your daily ritual? Yeah, so my daily, and you know, I'm pretty routine. And drive, that's another thing that drives my girlfriend nuts about my my thing, because for me, everything is pretty pretty structured. Uh, my calendar, you know, I've got stuff written out. Typically, you know, the night before, I will map out what I need to do to do today. Um, stuff that, you know, like this, we booked this what three, four, five weeks ago. I don't really specifically remember, but it got put in my calendar immediately yeah. when we booked it, um, so I could book around it. Um, but then when I start in the morning, there's no wondering what I'm going to do today. Um, I get to work. But I work out usually at 6 a.m. Um, I'm done at 7. Uh, I get home about 7.12, 7.15. Um, if I have to take my daughter to school because I share time with my ex-wife, um, then I typically will take a quick shower um, or I'll eat breakfast. Then I'll take my daughter, I'll grab her, we'll get in the car, go to school, and I'm usually back here by 8.05. Yeah. And then I either take a shower or I eat depending on what I did first earlier um, and then I start working and um, I work if I have my daughter um, my clock is set for 2.30 and I work till 2.30 I get in my car I go pick her up from school every day that I'm home I pick her up every single day um, how we'll old's your home. daughter my daughter's nine oh, so okay. she's a third grader she'll be a fourth grade next year all right and um, on Mondays I have to take her to gymnastics if I have her so that's at four o'clock so Mondays usually is a crap shoot in the afternoon, but I'll usually have like CDs in the car. So when I'm going to the gym, I'm listening to my subscriptions that I'm listening to. When I'm picking her up from school, I'm listening to those things. I'm not listening typically to the radio. Um, I'll often have a book in the car. So if I get caught, I have a book with me. Um, Always have that book, right? Yeah, you know, and I've got in, like in my, this is just on my floor, like within reading, reaching distance. Uh, This is just current, like, this is just, oh my God. this is about a fifth of, like, this month's reading pile. This is a book that I'm in the process of reading, too, Thou Shall Prosper. It's by uh, uh, Daniel Lapin, Rabbi Daniel uh, Lapin, which, again, it's probably outside my normal reading scope, but it's, I, I like to read a wide variety of things, so I'm not just reading the latest marketing book, because I think if you don't have exposure to a lot of stuff, I think you... Mm -hmm. You're selling yourself short. Yeah. So I have one last question, Darren. I appreciate your time. Um, this has been very valuable. I feel like I listened to you all day. But um, tell us, before I ask, tell us what's going on lately, what you're excited about. Tell us about the fitness center, Kids Bowl Free. What, where can people find you, say thank you? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, uh, if you go find my, let's call it Facebook page, I got a profile, but it's got about 50 people on it. Um, I spend most of my time working on my own businesses. Like I said, I don't do a lot of, let's say, call it coaching and, and consulting. Um, I do have some limited private clients that I do work with, so I am open to that. But oftentimes, I would rather look and see if there's a way that we could do 
you know, like a, a joint venture together rather yeah. than um, coaching and consulting. I just think it's better for both people. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I like to operate. Yeah. Um, the fitness business I'm excited about, we've taken it from concept to uh, something where I'm pretty proud we can hold up like legitimate testimonials of people with before and after photos that aren't photoshopped and full of BS. <laughs> and we've changed these people's lives. Right. Um, it's pretty cool to be able to play a part in somebody's life. Like yesterday, one person went from 225 down to 196. So wow. the first time they've seen a one on the scale in a long time. Um, our goal is to you know franchise or license that. We have a, a meeting with the attorney tomorrow to to kind of discuss our options there. Yeah. And um, kids bowl free. You know we're continuing to grow that and um, really you know provide a service that's valuable to the centers. I mean last year we've got a number of people who. One guy went from 20 kids to 500 in his youth bowling program over the past um, four years. That's for amazing. Him. Yeah, it's probably $100,000 in revenue a year for him. Um, I've had other people send us emails that, you know, they were, without us, they would have been bankrupt. So when you get those things, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty motivating. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of my story. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to be done yet with our fitness business and we're we're fairly excited about where it's going yeah congratulations on all your success with with everything um my last question is this you know there's been a lot of challenges you had to work through a lot i want to hear about a proud moment and i was reading about it must have been really cool to get that you got an award at gkic right? yes yeah, so a number of years ago i was really when kids Bowl free first started i uh, entered to win one of their you know, contest, and uh, I won the marketing, it, it, at the time, it was the Diamond Marketing Implementer of the Year, is what it was called, um, and I was competing against, you know, people that are seven and eight figure businesses, um, and uh, at the time, we weren't anywhere near where we are, but we were get we were at that kind of the, we were getting a lot of stuff done and making things happen, and um, I won that, and I got to go to Disney World with uh, Dan and Bill Glazer, uh, since then, you know, I've been a private client of Dan's on a, a couple of occasions. So I've had the, I call it the privilege of writing him a twenty thousand dollar check. Um, you know, it's one of those like things that you know, it's weird that you can say you're proud to have been able to write the twenty thousand right. dollar check. Right. Um, but I think the other thing that's that's been great is I've figured out a way to a help people out and b be able to spend more time at home with my daughter instead of being locked up in a in a hotel doing dirty work in crappy airports all the time. Right. Yeah. Well, but, uh, you know, if people want to contact me, um, they can go to my DarrenSpindler.com website. Yeah. Um, again, they can, you know, request info there. If they want to send me a one-off email, it's Darren at DarrenSpindler.com, and it's uh, Darren with one R and one I, so it's D-A-R-I-N yeah. um, at D-A-R-I-N Spindler, and that's S-P-I-N-D-L-E-R.com. And... I'll definitely reach out um, if you send me. You're a busy guy, so you know you do what you can do. But I do. Re I actually answer every single one of them. Um, it might be two or three weeks in some cases, depending on the, you know, yeah. urgency of them. But right. um, my girlfriend it drives her nuts because she like she does a lot of my like email cleanup and answers low level ones, and um, it drives her nuts that sometimes it stacks up to a couple hundred in there. But that's just <laughs> the way it is. Popular. Well, Darren, I want to be the first one to thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you. And uh, whenever you're in Chicago, please let me know. I will. Thanks much. Have Thanks, a great day. Thanks, Darren. Right.